why the Northeast is gripped by this gigantic freeze that's unprecedented in recent modern history. Why is it that we are setting records throughout the country? In New York City, just a few days ago, the temperature reached 5 degrees above zero Fahrenheit. And in other cities around the country, it went way below zero. And the question is, why are we having such unusual weather? Well, President Donald Trump came in and said, well, maybe we could use a little bit of good old global warming. Well, is there a link between global warming and this freeze that is gripping the United States? It seems to defy common sense. But we have to go back to what is called the polar vortex and why it's being destabilized. First of all, if you take a satellite photograph of the North Pole, you realize that there is a cap uh, of swirling cold air a vortex of cold air called the polar vortex. Usually it's quite stable. And the stability of the polar vortex is related to the jet stream. And so when the polar vortex is strong with a very strong wall around it, the jet stream is more or less stable and doesn't wander so much. However, recent computer simulations have shown that the stability of the polar vortex can in fact be violated by global warming. And here's how it works. The stability of the polar vortex depends on the temperature difference between the center and the outside rim of the polar vortex. So think of a spinning bucket, a spinning bucket of cold water at the top of the North Pole. For the most part, the bucket seems to be stable. However, the stability of this bucket depends on a large temperature difference between the inside of the bucket and the outside of the bucket. The bigger the temperature difference, the faster the winds move, and the more stable it is as a consequence. However, and this is the killer, it turns out that the temperature of the North Pole and the South Pole is rising twice as fast as the average temperature around the planet Earth. For example, if you go to the North Pole, 50 years ago with the Nautilus submarine, you can measure the thickness of the ice. 50 years later, when you go back to the North Pole, you find out that the average thickness is 50% thinner. In fact, over 50 years, it became 50% thinner, meaning that on average, every year, every year, the, the ice sheet over the North Pole gets 1% less. That is unprecedented in modern history. And it goes back to the fact that the average temperature of the North Pole and the South Pole is rising twice as fast as the average temperature around the rest of the planet Earth. Now, why is that important? Because as the temperature inside the vortex becomes closer to the temperature outside the vortex, the wall becomes unstable. Temp temperatures begin to rise inside, walls begin to become wobbly and less stable, and the jet stream starts to meander as a consequence. Now, you may say to yourself, is this science fiction? No. Satellite photographs, satellite photographs of the North Pole that you can see on the web shows that traditionally there is a cap, a circular cap on the North Pole given to us by the polar vortex, but recently especially over the last week or so, it's been wandering, pushing the jet stream further south. And that, we think, is one of the reasons why the polar vortex is unstable and why we're in this cold snap. So, ironically enough, it could have something to do with global warming. Now, you may say to yourself, what's the proof? Where is the smoking gun? First of all, if this is a theory. It hasn't yet been verified by a universal consensus among climatologists. However, there is an emerging feeling, given a few computer programs that have been done, that this could be the reason why we have instability in the polar vortex. But I repeat, to be fair, this is not the universal consensus of the scientific community, because there are other factors involved which are also linked to global warming. As the ice sheets begin to shrink, it means that the amount of heat being radiated and reflected back into outer space begins to change. So the very fact that you have a gradual melting of the North Polar regions directly affects the amount of sunlight that's reflected back into outer space. The less ice you have, 
the less reflection you have. The less reflection you have, the hotter the Earth gets because it retains the heat that normally would have gone into outer space. So that is yet another effect stimulated by global warming. But once again, is this the smoking gun? And the answer is no. We cannot say for sure that this is directly caused by global warming. Why is that? Because global warming is an average effect. It's an effect seen over years. And global warming does predict that when you complete the dots, when you complete the dots, you're going to see an average effect as temperatures begin to rise, as the atmosphere is destabilized as a consequence. But will you have some data points that are not on this nice line? And the answer is yes, because the weather is statistical. So don't believe it when anyone says for sure, with 100% certainty that it is or is not caused by global warming. Scientists say that 90-95% confidence that with 90 to 95 percent confidence, these effects are caused by global warming. And remember that global warming is a misnomer. We're not talking about a uniform warming of the planet at all. We're talking about global swings because as the Earth heats up, the energy inside the Earth is trapped and sloshes around, creating forest fires and droughts in one area, creating coal snaps in another area, creating flooding in another area, all at the same time. And so global warming, unfortunately, is a misnomer. 